All right, guys. Uh, Senator Frist, I, I'm, I have to ask the question, but what is it like to work with, what is it like to work with Bono? I mean... You know, it, it's an interesting question. Uh, I first met Bono uh, in Washington as a senator, and then it was interesting, before the one campaign, before he took Secretary O'Neill uh, to Africa, Bono and I decided that I, as a physician, and he, not as much as a senator, and he, as a humanitarian, not so much as a rock star, would meet in Africa. And so we said, where are we going to meet? And he was down in Malawi, I think, and I was up in Kenya, and we put a place in Memphis, we went to Uganda. And so we traveled through northern Uganda together, and uh, no crowds, no security, he didn't have his entourage, I didn't have an entourage. And we spent time looking at the issues of HIV, AIDS, debt relief, water back in the bush in, in Uganda. Uh, and to be honest with you, that's the way I know uh, Bono. Uh, I've seen his heart. I've, uh, of course, seen him in Washington and all the political things he's been involved in. I've been to his concerts. Uh, but in truth, I know him best in the bush, in Africa, looking at these very issues. And uh, we will, on September 30th, uh, be going to Iowa and uh, uh, with a group of people uh, as well as we go to the early primary states with this this very similar message of, of moral imperative and uh, national security, saving lives and, as well as national security. Uh, as a health professional and as one of the former top policy makers in the nation, uh, what do you feel we should do to combat AIDS in Africa and what steps should our country take uh, to help out with that? Well, it, you know, it's a good question as we look ahead. Uh, my experience with, with HIV AIDS began in the hospital as a physician. Um, it's interesting that we've had uh, 23 million people die of HIV AIDS around the globe, but it seems like yesterday, 1983, that we saw the first cases. Before that, we'd never seen it in the United States of America. So I watched 100 people die while I was uh, a doctor, and then 500, then 1,000, and then 500,000, and a million, then 10 million, then 23 million people. So in the early 2000s, I went to President Bush and uh, discussed with him, and he had never been to Africa, but was very sensitive to the issue. Then in 2003, he came out and made a commitment of $15 billion to the surprise of America, to the surprise of the world community, to the surprise of my Republican colleagues. And that was a real turning point, because that is more money than has ever been spent on a single disease by the history of any country in the world. Uh, and it was an appropriate response of American leadership, bipartisan people coming together. It's a good first step, uh, but now, five years later, we've spent $18.6 billion. We've saved really million, affected millions of lives, but right now we have about a million and a half people on therapy, antiretroviral therapy, but we got 23 million people, which is growing every day. So we have a lot to do, and it goes beyond money. As a scientist, we have to have better science. There is no cure for HIV AIDS today. Everybody in the United States of America, we don't have a cure for it. We can treat it. And so we have to have much, much better research. We don't have a vaccine for HIV AIDS today. So we have to have better science. We have to have a better prevention message. Because the fact that we can't, we don't have enough money in the world to treat everybody uh, today. We're going to have to be able to prevent. So a huge emphasis in terms of cultural um, uh, education uh, around, around the globe. And then uh, thirdly, this multifactorial approach of, of uh, one vote of weight, where you look at related issues of what do people really die of with HIV AIDS? They die from unclean water, because that gives you the infection. And so if you can clean up the water, you cut the number of deaths with the HIV AIDS. Education, get young girls in school in Africa, where they're not subjected to these predatory men who basically literally rape them and spread HIV AIDS. Probably the number one thing you can do in Africa today is keep young girls in school for an extra year or an extra two years. And so you see the approach. So it's really those three things. Uh, another question along those lines. I mean, we've put uh, international uh, aid into Africa, but we have a lot of uh, dictators and uh, warlords over there, most notably uh, Mugabe and yep. Zimbabwe. Uh, as we send that aid in, uh, a lot of times that's going to line uh, these people's own pockets. Yep. How do we get these goods directly to the people that need them and bypass these dictators? Great question. The United States of America and the world community has, has wasted billions of dollars, probably $40 billion of taxpayer money has been wasted in Africa. 
and that's a strong statement to make, but it goes back to the reason that you said we've had regimes that are corrupt. It lines their pockets or it goes overseas and it never gets down to the people to, to be treated. And what the, the, the encouraging thing is that today we've seen a fourfold increase in aid to Africa, fourfold increase over the last six years, huge amount. So we're putting more money in, but it's being coupled now with the demand. You don't get the money unless you fight corruption, uh, further transparency, incorporate into your constitution the rules of, of democratic sort of representation and the rule of law. And that's, that's through what's called the Millennium Challenge Corporation today. It's a public-private partnership. Uh, it began right after 2001. And right now, the money is going through that Millennium Challenge Corporation before it goes out to these nations. And then all of a sudden, the African nations have an incentive to have stable government. Uh, is that if you can't clean up the corruption, it is very hard to, to really adequately tackle these issues. And that's important. That's really important, as you guys have reported. You know, why now versus 10 years ago? Why does it make a difference? Because your average taxpayer doesn't want to be throwing money in Africa when we have so many needs here unless they know that that taxpayer dollar is used well. And now we've got that structure in place. It's called the NCC, Millennium Challenge Corporation.